Hello everyone, thank you each one of you for watching my videos and subscribing my channels. All the supports that you have provided are great to my channel. Uh, so today I'm going to talk briefly about uh, quite a few difference uh, so that maybe you can think from different approaches on how to set up the data. So setting up the data in the testing framework is pretty crucial. So we need to think from different prospect. First thing is you have to be sure that it is maintainable. So you need to make sure you'll be able to maintain them, not just having one data one place, but how easily you can maintain in the case that it changes tomorrow. Um, next thing is obviously it has to be readable. Anybody can go uh, see data and you know figure out what it is. Uh, obviously, then uh, there should not be more complexity in order to even fetch that goal. So you need to make sure that also. So um, let's capture these things. Um, so I was going to show you one quick example of how these tests are there and how we can transform from the different approaches, right? Um, so I already have a Cucumber test. Uh, in place so I'm going to show you that first and then we can talk about the other one so this is my uh, cucumber test pretty much this just goes through you know uh, this these scenarios so there are about register filling registration form and with these data these data are in the cucumber examples so the data are being um, provided from the cucumbers feature files um, so if you see each one of these rows is a one scenario so this will have one two three four five six different scenarios so uh, what's this is you can run as many scenario but also continue to provide different data here so every time this whole scenario goes through a single row and it will run through that scenario that data and then it will end the test and then next time the same test run runs until it finds these rows there and for this to happen you don't have to do anything cucumbers already built in for that in order to absorb these additional rows of the data so it's not the case for all of the time right so in order to maintain the data in cucumber is also a complex that you may need to handle sometimes it can be very very uh, terrible um, so that's one thing but other thing is when the cucumber test runs they provide certain these steps are being visible so people like a business folks will know when they see this test like what it did or how it ran so I'm going to run quickly on this test and then show you you know how this test would run so I already have a uh, cucumber related videos but I'll just show you how they run so right click run as run configuration these are the j units so here's the test so first of all here if you see run single test this is the class that has the runner on it so this is the class will provide how to run this test obviously it's a j unit 4 um, there's no args so usually you would be able to pass the vm arguments here and then provide the certain uh, configured related data also so if you want to go through that runner class, let's go there. Um, so we quickly see what they are doing. So here they are inside the runner. This is the class that runs the test. So currently I have everything you know commented because there are so many different forms of tags. Uh, tags. So Cucumber tests are based on these tags, right? So you could literally pass whatever tag you want and then it will pick up that tag throughout this feature files location so whatever feature file has this tag it will run those all scenarios regardless of which class it is in that's the you know good thing of cucumber um, pretty much this class would remain the empty only thing is we are just you know setting up the cucumber options here like how to run where the reports be all those sort of things um, so what we're telling here what feature file to run and feature file is there and then you know we are saying which project location to look, what tags to run. Pretty much this is all you pass. So when you run this test, you could just run this here, pick up that test. 
and it will launch the browser it will go through that you know demo site that i have it so this red what you see are the logs so obviously this you know this is the login it will print out all these logs so this is how the scenario is going through if you see here just filling out the forms this form data are coming from here so there are, this scenario is pretty quick so there are only six scenarios so i'll just let it run So each time any of this scenario fails, it will just mark that specific row fail and it will continue to the next scenario. So at the end, you will see like what scenario is passed and what failed. So that's another thing. So I will just putting it pause just so you're not bored so i let this video finish i mean this test finished and now we see right there are summaries of these logs and what scenarios ran all the spreads are the logs um so in order to go through these all steps there are all of my existing videos or this i just ran this test just to demonstrate the next step um, so that you don't get lost. So I was just kind of recapping this. So I'm not going through how these tests are written. Um, so here you see six scenarios are passed and then you could see the entire thing ran for one minute, 19 seconds. Um, if you go through the JUnit, you can see the scenarios passed. If it failed, it will just fail here. And you can, you know, try to ex explore this and you see each one of these line is a scenario, like I said. So it will show you like what things are, you know, ran and then all this data there. If you go further more, you'll see all of these steps, like, like these steps. So for example, if anything fails here, you'll see this guy red. So you definitely know like where or what thing, what item failed. So it's easier for you to go and fix where to go. So anyway, this is one side of, uh, you know, how to handle the test into data driven based on the cucumber so only con or like a pros and cons only the good thing about the cucumber is you will see more the details steps executions um, the bad thing about is that you know you have to maintain this at the file level so that's the only thing about the cucumber that you have to maintain it so let's think of the different approach right so i have uh, so many other videos with uh, with um, excel related videos that lots of uh, people like those videos there those are very helpful for some people so i'm trying to go through their original approach that you can try so um, i don't have those exact files now because these are the new project um, so i'm going to show you what these files are and then you'll see so if there are like two files i have test data csv test data xls so to demonstrate the difference about this same scenario, I'm going to mimic the data that I have here exactly same way. So about these things, this does not change. Okay, this is still the Java method. You still go through you know, same steps, same method. Nothing changes. Only this line changes. Even if you have this line, you can still call this method directly and use it whatever you want. They are just this line is only for Cucumber to find out where to go. But after that, this method and here is same Java class, right? We all know that. So next thing is, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm only trying to mimic this set of data in the different source other than the Cucumber. So you don't really need to have a Cucumber framework at all if you don't want to do that. And I'm going to just utilize all of these methods, whatever they are, I'll collect them and then I'll run it. But when I feed the data into this step, this step, if you see, and I feel the registration info inside there, what you are taking is you are taking a map, string, string, map, right? If you go inside there, you see like map.get name, last name, emails. So these are coming from the Cucumber file, right? So when it's like it will give you day so based on that value you are entering into the registration form right so from this area right you see nothing different it has nothing different than it was a cucumber scenario 
you are still writing the same Java codes. Only thing, this example piece we are trying to extract out so that we don't need to rely on Cucumber. So um, I have built the Excel file. Um, so here if you see this Excel file is there, same data, nothing changed. Uh, uh, in fact, I add one additional row which is called uh, test ID, additional column called test ID. Um, and then uh, currency, everything, right? Everything is there. So this data currency, how this data is mapped is I put it in the row sequence. So first, first test data will run this setup scenario. Second test data run this setup scenario, just like it is set up in the Cucumber, right? And again, it's up to you how you want to set the data. You could be make it the row based or you could make the column based. It's up to you. You could have this here and all these values respectively there also fine. So my other video that I uploaded um, a few months ago or a year ago had a different form of data. So go through those videos if your data is set up different. So uh, this is what we're trying to do. So before going through running these tests, we want to make sure they are, you know, um, we, we want to make sure they are retrieved from these files. So this is the Excel file. Excel file is same spreadsheet, right? One different is there's an Excel file. The way you read the data from Excel is little different than the way you read from CSV. So there is a CSV file. There's some benefit of the CSV file is they are very lightweight, right? So CSV file, you have same format, row, column, everything. So row, column, everything, same data. Only thing is you cannot format this like colorful or all that, right? So in these videos, I have already uploaded Excel based a video. So these videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this guy whole data into um, hash map um, and then also I can convert them into the JSON object and then read this data from that hash map I will pass those values into same method that we used for this I'm going to use the exact same method inside there I'm not going to change anything because this method doesn't care where the data is coming from this method needs a map. So I need to call this method and I need to pass the map. So how do I create the map? The map I will create is I go through this same Excel file, like CSV file for now. I'll create a map based on this test case ID. This will be the key. This will be the entire map. Each test case ID will contain entire array of this data. Inside the data, each one of these data will be based on the their keys. So currency, euro, gender, male, day, day, like that. Okay. So I'm going to show you how this should look when I convert this data through Java. So if you see here, when we convert this data, it will look like this. So it has a test case ID and then it has a maps, right? Inside the map it has month september last name bakers email everything has a key value right but entire key value set is also stored into the test case id so you don't conflict with another one right so we will make sure we are fetching this entire map into one key and then reading them and after that we will run this each scenario one by one test case id right so this is our uh, concept so this is what we're going to demonstrate in this video so actually why don't we just go through next video this video is a concept and next video we are going to show you what's the next step of this video how do we read this how do we convert this whole thing and how do we utilize in the same method when we run this test with the without the uh, cucumber based okay and also after that, finally, I'm going to show you also, you can do the same thing with the JSON objects. You can literally convert entire thing in the hash map first, so you are out of that uh, CSV or Excel file. Once you convert them, 
then you can easily convert it into the JSON object. So how the JSON object would look like is, so you can literally do the same thing, convert these Excel files and that into the JSON object. So JSON are considered lightweight. Uh, you don't have to, it's just like nothing but that. It doesn't give you any extra benefit. It is, it is the way what you prefer. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can convert these values into the JSON object, but before even doing the JSON object, you have to first convert it in the map. So we go through one by one, we go make sure everything is converted into this set of map, and then we will then convert it into the JSON object. And I will show you in both ways, you can do the same result. So this is the agenda video. So next video, please um, follow my video. I'm going to upload another video with this solution. We are going to go step by step so you don't get lost. So you can easily do this in your project. And believe me, this is going to be really helpful. This is mostly like a real time scenarios that you will see in your day to day job. So um, take a look, um, you know, try it out. If you, you know, find this helpful, please feel free to comment. And if you feel any challenging in anything, please also feel free to comment. Uh, when I'm possible, I'll try to respond to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching my videos. And please continue to subscribe my channel. Please support my channel. Thank you very much.